Why, hello there, and welcome to another video on Red Flood, a mod for Hearts of Iron 4 based on uh, complete insanity. And as you could probably find out from the title, today's video will be about the far eastern piss stain of Zeltorosia, or rather what pops out of it after it has gone through a massive famine in the east, the west, the center, followed by the leader resigning, followed by the military taking over, followed by said military being blown to smithereens by a Ukrainian bomb and the collapse of the Celta Rosian state. But hey, it could be worse, we could have been Japan. So at least there's that. But back to the main topic of the video. As you can see, we're playing as the lovely nation of Vladivostok, I mean Primurie, on the eastern shore of Manchuria, a lovely place that's probably sunny at least three months a year, and which is ruled by, surprisingly enough, a man with a mustache, of course. Now the focus tree might not be much to look at, but we'll see if it expands later. Might as well start with the railways already. It's gonna be a pain trying to take the rest of the, the Russian warlord states with, with uh, infantry divisions going through the horrendous supply in Siberia. We have no military factories and only naval dockyards. So perhaps we'll have to deploy our submarines as land boats. Yep, called it. Our own land is our own worst enemy. We now get to choose between the two Spiridon brothers who are According to the text I received earlier, basically the oligarchic rulers of Primuraya, with Spiridon being more of a law dude and Nikolai being more of a economic guy. I think we'll go with Spiridon the Wise. We'll jump right on, taking the price of liberty and uh, all these focuses before attacking Ukraine. Yes, there's no time like the present. Now remember, we have no military factories. So that means no guns. Our soldiers are basically just running around trying to stab the enemy to death with very pointy icicles. But hey, if it works, why fix it? And now we even have a singular military factory. So we can finally start producing something that actually looks like it belongs on a battlefield. They have intelligently placed their troops up here in the far east. Not defending their own core territory. Very smart there, AI. Manchu's up next, then. That went a uh, bit quicker than I thought it would. What's it been? Six months? And we're already basically back where we started, I guess. So, with the final national focus done, that's all we get. Not really much is there. That's a bit disappointing, but I guess we'll do the best of it. At least we gain these decisions to gain some war goals though. Might as well put those to good use. Starting with going northwards towards Yakutia. Not sorry about this really. And now their capital is in impassable terrain. I might as well start snaking while I wait for Yakutia to capitulate. This way I won't have to invade the northern Siberian state through, well you know, northern Siberia and can instead sneak in underneath from the south, you see. This tactic however still doesn't save me from having to build copious amounts of fucking railways. And while I'm at the topic of supply, it's probably good to start spamming out some more divisions to prepare for the war with the Russian Empire, whom we will soon be bordering. Somehow the Kavkaz society also managed to nab northern Siberia. I don't really understand how. But we will deal with that later. First up, of course, is the Russian Empire. Actually, scratch that. First up is building more railways. Uh, okay, now is probably as good a time as ever to attack the Russians. They seem to be busy with both the Lithuanians or uh, Baltics or whatever, I don't know, in the west and as well as the 
weird Georgian artist Kafka society in the south. So we probably won't get a better chance than this to uh, defeat them now that their forces are so spread out. Here we go. Time to get this over with then. Shouldn't be that hard. I've been spamming out division after division, so we should be able to get the upper hand and push straight into Moscow. You know, I really have no idea how this tank designer works, so uh, I think I'll just spam engine, because that should be good, right? More speed can't really hurt, you know, when you're drifting across the plains of Eurasia. Basically funding the entire US economy at this point. And there we go. The Petrov brothers marching back into Moscow. If those uh, horses could uh, stop peeing in the way. Yes, and we're back in business. Now let's see what we can get. You know, I'm starting to suspect that the Kavka society has a thing for a North Arctic sea coast. But hey, that's not a problem. We can give them as much coast as they want. And even some company too. With all that done, we can now uh, proclaim our victory. Which takes about a day. There we go. And we're now the Russian National Republic. We don't really get any more focuses, no. And of course we receive a super event on top of that. So I guess you could call it at that, but uh, I don't really feel like the borders are perfect enough yet, so I won't quit just yet. I'm sorry for this, Ukraine. And that just leaves the final boss, whom are being guaranteed by the British for some weird reason. Well, the AI will be the AI. So, might as well start guarding the coast then. Fucking called it. Now, I would like to stop this, but uh, sadly, my uh, fleet was built in Crimea and the Turks won't let me leave, so I'll just have to deal with all the incoming naval invasions one by one instead. Yay. Although I'm kind of hoping that the French will just run out of divisions before, before long, so I won't have to deal with them coming over by sea instead. You know, considering that we started in Vladivostok, having walked all the way to Brest is quite the achievement. Should probably also start with getting rid of the British Navy. And while that's going on, I might as well also take Italy. You know, that wasn't all that hard. It only took an hour and a few million dead Russians, but you know, we'll get more people now from the lands that we conquered and we'll use them to build a bridge over to the United Kingdom. After we have dealt with uh, all the occupation policies, of course. You get a country, and you get a country, and you get a country. Ah, what a masterpiece. Just one more country to go. And for good measure, of course. Unsurprisingly enough, not a whole lot of resistance left. And that's the last of that. All that remains now is to take the small Central Asian little mini-states and then the map painting will finally be over. By the way, is it just me, or do some of our generals look a bit too similar to one another? Ah oh well, who cares, here goes the last one. So, for a little rump state on the eastern side of Manchuria without a singular military factory, I think this is uh, pretty good. Uh, it took around six hours, and uh, probably wasn't worth it. But uh, now I need to go and eat lunch, so bye.